appreciate you coming and waking up early and joining us for this interesting conversation. A conversation about reality. What is reality? Um, you know, one of the realities is we're in this busted ass gym right now. <laughs> At nine o'clock in the morning, in quiche, uh, which I'm sure the guys used to play basketball and the people who are on the Tini Harris photos would have never thought. Um, the reality also is that this space and our presence in this space is a key factor in the velocity and aesthetics of change that are happening in this city, right? That is also a reality. One of my favorite rappers, uh, writers, artists, Method Man, uh, in the classic, I Came to Bring the Pain. Anybody know that song? A couple, like four people, all right. <laughs> He has a, a few bars, I'm gonna perform them real quick, and it's about reality. Is it real, son? Is it really real, son? Let me know it's real, son, if it's really real. Something I can feel, son, load it up and kill one. Want a raw deal, son, if it's really real. Have you experienced reality at that level? Think about what a man must go through to say or utter those words, where he comes from, what is his story, what is his personal view of things. Most things that you experience probably aren't that real. For me, a big part of reality in a digital era are hashtags. That's really real stuff. Who knows what a hashtag is? What's a hashtag? Someone tell me. Oh, all oh, hands. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You were the first hand up. I saw you. <laughs> What's a hashtag? It's Somebody else. What's a hashtag? group of students what it was and they said my mom uses it to pay bills <laughs> the pound sign right <laughs> for me a hashtag is a way to bend reality it's a portal through the digital space and real world experiences it's like a Bill and Ted phone booth traveling through space with a phone book written by Octavia Butler. It's like, you know, some raw, funkadelic and cable from X-Men, they jump into a hashtag, right, 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 stay with me, stay with me though. <laughs> so cable from X-Men and some raw and Bootsy, don't forget Bootsy Collins, right? They all jump into a hashtag and, uh, you know, they go to a class taught by Zora Neale Hurston. So a hashtag is a portal, and hopefully an effective portal between real world experiences and a digital space. Most of you guys are going between those two realities right now as I'm talking. So we have to identify hashtags as a gateway, a portal, like I was saying, for the digital space. 
I asked a lot of you to engage. We'll write some hashtags up here. We got some good ones. One Planet, Penev, Black Lives Matter, Disability, Too White, Fight for IS, oh, for us. Um, I think a good hashtag always has three elements to make it an effective portal, right? It has to have an element of advertisement. It has to have an element of advocacy. And it must have an element of activism. So today I'm going to show you some videos and I'm going to share with you how my favorite hashtags engage those three things. Come on with the first video, please. That's not it. <laughs> These are the videos that we watch coming in. And I could come over to, there we go, all right. So this is gonna be a really cool advertisement for Bloom Concepts and my own artwork. Hey! So that's one of my favorite hashtags operating as a public art piece in the city, Black Lives Matter. And as he said in the beginning, I am the co-founder of Bloom Concepts. We are a creative hub dedicated to the advancement of artists of color and artists representing marginalized voices. The key thing with that, that's our busted ass sign made by a local artist, the same here. Key thing in that piece is providing a cultural kitchen or a salon space for artists to operate. Those are all the cool people that come there. Our hashtags of Boom Concepts and my personal hashtag of the Kinsel Collection represents an army of lovers that will never be defeated in this city. We provide in-house residencies, workshops. This is something from open engagement when they came to visit us in the Black Unicorn Library. That was one of my students I mentored from Autodice. So, you know, really activating artists, activating space, Right, and giving them an opportunity to grow their creative passion. So that young man that was just on the screen, I met him at 16, he's 20 now, and he's had two CD release parties at our space. Right, so providing that opportunity, that advertisement, that activism and advocacy for fellow artists. This is some of my street art, personal advertisement, if you see it on the streets, right? Uh, you know, everyone in Pittsburgh hates graffiti, so how do you get around the reality of you will be arrested in New Fed Town where you might get your door kicked in for being an artist on someone else's property. So creating non-permanent or semi-permanent installations around Pittsburgh as a way to communicate messages. That one says, mother bitch, clean whore. I like to cuss early in the morning, just to make sure you're woke. Um, but these street totems represent different stories and act as cultural markers in places, specifically places that are being affected by aesthetics of change and velocities of change, right? That's the act activism, the advocacy, the advertisement. It's made by me. Maybe if you have a fancy gallery, you want me to be this weird chip inside, I'll come good. <laughs> so in the next part of those totems, or those street totems are street deities, so identifying um, powerful people or deities within our community, uh, identifying street orishas within our community and engaging them with that totem. This is our next one. You can turn the sound up. We wonder about everything. We hear sirens and laughter. We see people who care. We want to treat people equally. We are leaders. We pretend to have superpowers. We feel gallant and unstoppable. We touch hearts. We worry about our community. We cry for our family. We, we understand justice and freedom. We speak the truth. We dream big. So this is a summer program that I work with uh, Kelly Strayhorn Theater and Pittsburgh Public Schools called Summer Dreamers Academy. We are theaters in progress. We wonder about our future. We hear birds and rain. We see success in action. We hear sirens and laughter. We want peace and justice. We are creative and smart. We present the class. We feel pain. We touch the minds of many. We worry about danger. We cry when we lose someone. We understand. He said no to the rally. We didn't go out the rally. We tried to have to go our best. 
So expressing to the students the importance of using hashtags, so you see we are, uh, that poem prompt started as I am, talking about who you are, your individual identity. Uh, this is at a summer camp in Homewood, uh, at Faison, which is an arts elementary school here in Pittsburgh, uh, named after Dr. Helen Faison, and really talking about her legacy and how do we engage traditional media outlets or independent media outlets through hashtags, making sure that we engage activism, advocacy, and advertisement in order to spread our message. So the students created I Am Poems. They connected those to We Are, talking about the collective identity of the community, and then seeing with different platforms and using activism through art to express their ideas in multiple mediums. So we wrote poems, you saw some of the street totems. So you know, activism as a way of sharing knowledge, right? Uh, sharing knowledge, sharing ideas, engaging and teaching babies. I think I have taught some of y'all babies in here. That's right. <laughs> And then general advertisement. So advertisement for Pittsburgh Public Schools, for Kelly Schrehorn Theater, again, for myself as an individual artist because this is not free, although this morning is free. <laughs> right? Advertisement about the wonderful um, resources that we have in the city based around our school district, based around the collaborative efforts between school districts and arts institutions as well. Right? So talking about we are, I am, the students didn't believe me at first. They thought hashtags were used only by famous people or in advertisements. They did not identify the advocacy or the activism within that piece. They also thought we were gonna get in trouble when I told them you go outside and hammer stuff on the telephone. <laughs> we did not get in trouble. Dr. Lane, she was cool with it. We talked to them, they shared it. The great and powerful thing about that is they shared it on their social media platform. So not only did we share it through Bloom Concepts and my personal platform, DS Pencil, to take that on the ground activism, that grassroots activity from the classroom, in the community, a community that people are just now interested in financially, right, reinvestment in these communities, and taking it to a digital space so that we're spreading it to a global audience. By spreading it to that larger audience, our students uh, got a call from the Tribune Review and we were featured as a story for our art activism that summer, right? So not only advertisement for the school district, Kelly Strayhorn Theater, myself, but identifying those youth as practicing artists, right? I know I have a lot of artist friends who've never been featured in the newspaper. And you're always saying, that's what well, people always say, free press or um, exposure, right? <laughs> so that was, my students, or our students, our children, is one of their first lessons in positive exposure. And also having the opportunity to choose how, why, and when, if they wanted their picture taken, what they want to say to the uh, reporter, and also really being in control of that narrative in the media. And that's specifically important as young black children, young black and brown children in our neighborhood in our city of Pittsburgh. We're gonna go to the next video. Activism, advocacy, and advertisement. So this last project, our last video that I'm sharing with you is a personal project that I'm launching or I've been working on over the past two years. It's called Hashtags Are The New Protest Signs. Some of my friends in the audience are in this video. Fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, you may not recognize them. The idea around this project is to build a library of avatars online as a way for people to access a platform that will engage the digital space and methods of activism and advocacy. Uh, I, as a visual artist, am a child of hip hop, so text-based visuals or text-based uh, art and practice is really important and key, and especially engaging that text or that messaging in unsanctioned spaces. Right, the internet is the wild, wild west. So sometimes it's a sanctioned space, sometimes it's not an unsanctioned space. I think that's one of the most powerful uh, points about this new project that I'm working on, or two years, I guess that's pretty good. Uh, about this project that I'm working on is really engaging people in an unsanctioned space, but also connecting them with the opportunity to advocate for other pieces and points of activism, right? 
So figuring out those common grounds, the intersectionalities between all of our struggles. And uh, Michael, what, was, what did we talk about yesterday? Our struggles and our, and our resistance. Yeah, so how do you resist? How do you engage? And how do you fight back in a way that is act activism, advocacy, and advertisement and connects you with a larger community? Uh, you may not necessarily agree with Black Lives Matter, but as a place where it talks about police brutality, you may have had your ass with bad cops before, right? Um, so there is some intersectionality there. Uh, let's look at some of these hashtags up here. Pittsburgh love, hashtag Pittsburgh love. So if we were to include Pittsburgh love and hashtags on the new protest sites, we would engage all of you to create an avatar and a photo booth with our gen general various hashtags behind you, and then we would exchange Pittsburgh love for the general message of hashtags on the new protest sites. So I want to take a small digital break in this conversation, because I know I'm coming up on short time. I want you to get to your phone right now and put out a hashtag that you think can, thinks can connect with activism, advocacy, and advertising. Boom Concepts is a great hashtag to use. <laughs> Seconds, four, three, two, one. Put out a hashtag of your choosing that includes activism, advertisement, and advocacy. Or put out hashtag boom content. <laughs> this project is really exciting. I'm taking it uh, to the Create Festival this year as part of the Three Rivers Arts Festival. So uh, myself and my studio mate, Julie Miles, will be presenting this project. Um, we'll also be presenting it as a session at the Allied Media Conference in Detroit. Uh, so we're super excited to be taking a group or a team of Bloom Concept artists to figure out how to present these ideas and these hashtags to a larger community. Uh, not always thinking about it just simply in the lens of activism because knowing you will potentially lose a larger audience. The point of the hashtag is a digital archiving system. Um, and a lot of times that's something that grassroots people artists who are kind of forget, forgetful or have a lot on their plate, parents, your general person in today's uh, you know, microwave society has a really hard time of fouling and saving things. So remember, a hashtag is a way for you to audit, archive, and assess your experiences as you're going through your personal reality and the shared reality of our world. Thank you very much. <laughs> 